This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you also get access to Nebula, a streaming video service that City Beautiful is a part of. The Tokyo metro area has over 37 million people. It's the largest urban area in the world. Every day that the city grows, it shows us how much bigger a city can get. Many of today's largest cities are in Asia, but demographic forecasters anticipate that fast-growing African cities may overtake Asia in the near future. One projection has Kinshasa at over 83 million people in 2100. And if the cities in the Pearl River Delta eventually merge, it will form a city of over 120 million people. That's over three Tokyos. What would a city of over 120 million people look like? And is that even the upper limit for how big a city can get? And would we even want to live there? I'm pretty sure that a single city would never be as large as the Star Wars city planet of Coruscant. But in this video, we'll use what we know about megacities to make an educated guess about how big a single urban area can get. There are currently 33 megacities in the world right now. The United Nations defines a megacity as an urban region with a population of over 10 million people. The UN predicts that 10 more regions will join the eight-digit club by 2030. And by that year, nearly 10% of people on Earth will be living in megacities. And for the purposes of this video, I'm coining the term gigacity to mean any contiguous urban area with a population greater than 100 million people. We'll get to those in a minute. Megacities are typically divided into two groups. First, you have cities like New York, Tokyo, London, and Paris, cities in wealthy nations. They are typified by post-industrial economies and slow population growth. Then you have cities like Delhi, Dhaka, and Karachi, cities in developing nations. These cities are rapidly industrializing and growing rapidly as well, as migrants from the rural hinterlands flood into the city to seek economic opportunities that the city provides. Many are growing so fast that migration is outstripping economic growth and available affordable housing, leading to informal settlements and informal economies. So Tokyo probably will not be the biggest city in the world for long. Growth rates suggest that the next city pushing the boundaries of what is possible will probably be a Cairo, Kinshasa, or Mumbai. They could show us what a city of 60 or even 80 million people looks like. But there is another possibility a gigacity formed from several large cities or several megacities merging together. And this would push the boundaries of how large an urban area could get. We're talking populations north of 120 million people. That's the population of Japan or Mexico. That city would be the equivalent of the 12th largest country in the world if it was one. These possible gigacities would be the result of the cities in a megalopolis merging into one contiguous urban area. A megalopolis is a cluster of nearby metropolitan areas. For example, the Northeast Megalopolis is an area on the eastern seaboard of the United States that goes from Boston down to Washington and includes the cities of New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. It would be difficult to imagine any sort of dense development connecting all of these cities, at least in the near future, nor someone from Washington really feeling like they were in the same urban area as someone in Boston. But given enough time and enough urban growth, it could happen. The Northeast Megalopolis is not a good candidate for the world's largest city, and that's primarily because of its slow growth. But there are three regions in China definitely in the running. China's government has been promoting regional urban cooperation as a means of providing prosperity to its residents, even as the developing nation's economy begins to slow down. The first of these regions is the Pearl River Delta, home to Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and several other cities with millions of people each. The official population total for this area is 65 million, but because there's incomplete data for internal migrants, some estimates put the total to be as high as 120 million. The cities of the Pearl River Delta are still mostly separate, but they're growing fast and growing together. Another possible giga region is in the Beijing area. It's sometimes known as the Jing Jin Ji, or just the JJJ region, short for Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei. This gigacity would be home to over 130 million people when the cities merge together. Finally, the region around Shanghai, the Yangtze Delta area, could form into the largest urban area on Earth. If all of the provinces in the area, Shanghai, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Anhui, form into one continuous urban area, it would have a population of 220 million people. That's the number today. It would likely be higher once all of the new urbanization is built to connect the 27 core cities in the region. 
a fully connected Yangtze Delta could have 250 to 300 million people in the future. There are limits to even China's growth. The nation's birth rates are declining, meaning that the rapid urbanization trends of the 20th century are unlikely to continue unabated into the 21st century. And this is true worldwide as well. According to a projection by the Pew Research Center, Earth will reach a peak population of 10.9 billion people by the year 2100. And while India is on track to surpass China in population, it will likely top out at 1.5 billion people. So while it's possible that an Indian megalopolis will surpass one of China's, there likely won't be enough people on Earth in a particular country to lead to one megalopolis greater than, say, 300 million people, at least not within the next century or so. There are other urban planning-related challenges that will also limit growth. For example, all cities need a healthy supply of natural resources to sustain its population, things like energy, food, and goods. It's possible to imagine a city of any size generating enough energy within its own borders using a mix of nuclear and renewable resources, but it's harder to make water appear out of nowhere. Already, China's megacities are pumping groundwater at unsustainable rates. And this isn't just a problem in China. The megacity of Los Angeles has historically been constrained by its access to water and has resorted to piping fresh water from hundreds of miles away. It's the entire plot of the classic movie Chinatown. Desalination, the process of turning salt water into fresh water, could help provide water for growing gigacities. Desalination plants provide water for about 300 million people around the world today, especially in water-scarce regions like the Middle East. But desalination is much more expensive than pumping or piping, which has limited its use. And unfortunately, moisture farming technology only exists in a galaxy far, far away. Transportation is another challenge for megacities. If the Beijing region fully urbanized, the urban extent will be as large as the US state of Kansas or Great Britain. Getting from one side of the megacity to the other would pose a significant challenge. At that point, a city becomes so large that it loses some of its economic advantage. If a citizen can't benefit from that large job market because they can't get to a job in a timely fashion, well, they may move elsewhere, and it could discourage other people from moving there in the first place. This problem is already a reality for people in the Beijing region, where some residents of bedroom communities spend five to six hours a day commuting to and from their jobs. There's an upper limit to the amount of time any person can spend in transit to their jobs, and five or six hours a day is probably close to that limit. China is spending hundreds of billions of dollars in the Beijing region trying to tackle this enormous transportation challenge. They're building 24 new intercity high-speed rail lines by 2050, with eight coming online this year. The goal is that it would take someone no more than one hour to get to the center of the region from anywhere in the periphery. This train network would help bind the region together economically, culturally, and socially. And just check out this long-range plan for the Pearl River Delta region's mass transit network. There are 19 intercity lines connecting the 10 metro systems. China is using a similar integration strategy in the Yangtze River Delta too, where citizens will be able to use seven different metro systems using the same fair payment method. All sorts of healthcare, government administration, and education integrations are also in the works. So how big can cities get? Well, so long as the major urban planning issues are tackled, things like resource use, pollution, transportation, and economic integration, the only real limit is population demographics. For some, the idea of living in a city with 300 million people sounds terrible, while others might find it amazing. Millions of jobs within an hour train ride away, not to mention premier cultural institutions and every shop and restaurant you could ever want. The economic efficiencies can make the entire world more prosperous and lift more people out of poverty. As always, success or failure depends on implementation, which means that urban planners will have job security for the decades to come. In this video, I've tried to support my educated guesses with facts from a variety of sources, including the United Nations, the Pew Research Center, and other reputable news outlets. Now, if you'd like to hear my opinions on megacities and gigacities, you have to go to Nebula. An ad-free version of this video is waiting for you over there. In fact, this ad is replaced with me talking more about megacities. Nebula is where I post additional content on videos and Nebula original videos, like my most recent original video, the Best Cities 2020 Awards, where I determine which city implemented the most cutting edge urban policy for the year. Will the winner be Portland, Beijing, Paris or Nairobi, you have to watch on Nebula to find out. Nebula is great, and it's made even better thanks to our partnership with CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the source for high quality, engaging documentaries. They make thoughtful content, we make thoughtful content on YouTube, 
and you can get it all for one super low price. We have a deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link below, you get Nebula for free. That's not a free trial, but free as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. And they're running a promotion right now. You get an annual plan for 26% off. That's less than $15 per year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. Signing up is a great way of supporting this channel as well as the dozens of other creators working to make Nebula a success. It's also just a really great deal too. So please go to the link in the description and get yourself 26% off. Thanks.